السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل اللقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. سيدي ربي ريدي إن شاء الله. So today we are will be the last of high training. Uh, in the first high training, we talk about the fiqh. That's very important. The second one, we talk about the hikmah, the wisdom behind all the Hajj rituals. And today, we talk about step by step. Right? So, inshallah, we're leaving on August 1st. That will be on 29th of Dhul Qaeda. Right? So, on Thursday. And the next day will be the first of the Hijjah. And I mentioned it's very important. We'll talk about that because that's also uh, the day that in, in from first until the 10th of the Hijjah is the most beloved day to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We'll mention about that. So what you have to do before you leave uh, make tawbah, repentant, right? You're stuck for law, stuck for law, from, from all the sin. Remember that when Adam alayhi salam, he going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's the first step Adam did? Rabbana dhalamna anfusana, he repents. Because you cannot come to Allah because Allah is pure. Allah is quddus, holy. You cannot connect to him if you're not holy too, Right? And return to all the things belong to the others. So make sure if you borrow something, right? It's very important. It's called amana, trust, right? If you have debt, you have to write it down, yeah? Because as a righteous man, he died, and his student was, uh, saw him in dream. I said, Shaykh, where are you now? He said, Habasini Rabbi, Allah put me in prison. Why? He said, because I borrowed a broom and I forgot to return it. A broom. <laughs> How about dollars, right? Such so a debts, trust. Yeah? If someone did put something with you and ask for forgiveness, if you did wrong doing with someone. So it's very important that you clean with anybody, especially your family. You call them, talk to them, text them. Keep your wasiyah, will, with someone that you trust. You can send a wasiyah that uh, they have form, we send it to Allah, or oh, just simple wasiyah, simple uh, will, you know. And the important the will, you give advice to your son, to your daughter, right? So, you know, don't forget to keep, pray five times a day, to have taqwa, to come to the masjid, to learn about Quran, right? And then if you have something that, uh, if something happened to me, this is what I have, right? And please divide it into, according to Islamic Sharia. You give it to somebody that you trust, don't open it, and this something happened to me, right? So the Sahaba, the Allah knows, said, never sleep unless he have wasiyah under his, under his pillow, right? And then, Make sure your family have all the need during your absence. Call your parents and ask forgiveness and, and ask dua from them. This is very important, parents. Ridullah fi ridul walidain. The pleasure of Allah is in the pleasure of your parents. Right? And also, it's not only when you're traveling. You know, never by somebody in one week, in one month, you did not talk to your parent. Right? I know many of you, we are a parent now. How you feel when your son texts you? Right? So, my son, my daughter now in Indonesia. 
Right? Yesterday, my, my wife told me, said, you know, my son texted me, said, Mommy, are you, how are you doing? <laughs> That's what, how are you doing? She's happy. Just asking that. Right? So call them if your parent is, is uh, not here. If they are here, please visit them. Number five, pray two rakat at home before you leave. Read Al-Kafirun in the first rakat and Al-Ikhlas second rakat. Yeah? Then say the following dua to your family and those who come to say goodbye to you. Yeah? This is dua of the Prophet Muhammad SAW when he is leaving. Say after me, inshallah. Astaudiullah Dinaka Wa amanatak Wa khawatima Amalik Zawadakallahu taqwa Wa ghafara laka Dhanbak Wa yassara al-khayra Laka Haythuma kunta So I entrust your religion Right Let's miss something aja is to be in trust in Allah, your religion. I missed the translation. I in trust in Allah, your religion. So you put trust in Allah. Okay? And in the end of your deed with Allah. There is, during Umar radiallahu time, there is a, a father and son, they look like, typical, like, look like. So Umar said, subhanAllah, I never see people, father and son, look like, I said, if you know the story, Umar, you'll be amazed. I said, what the story? I said, one day, before I traveling, I ask Allah and I make dua. And I say, Astaudi Allah ma fi batni zawjati. I put in trust in Allah what in the body of my wife. And Allah. When I return, my fire passed away. But people saw every night like a light in the grave. You know the way people bury, like not like here, like also because in Egypt it's like room. So you put the, the, the dead body in that room. It's one room for one family. Then they cover it. So I was curious, you know, and after one day they still have light. When I opened it, I saw the baby. You know, and so I took it, I took the baby, and this is the, the boy. And Umar said, if you make dua also for your wife, Ya Allah, and trust you, the baby and the wife, inshallah, maybe the wife still alive. <laughs> yeah? And, and very interesting, my, my, my twins, when they're living, they have, uh, they have uh, rabbits. Allah said, and my rabbit too, Ya Allah. <laughs> yeah. And then he said, may Allah provide you with taqwa and forgive your sin and make easy for you all that good whenever you are. And then when you leave in the house, you read the following dua. Say after me, Bismillah, Tawakkaltu, Ala Allah, Wa la hawla, Wa la quwata, in la billah. In the name of Allah, I place my trust in Allah. It's very important, tawakkal. So don't think about your children, think about my business, your family, halas. You leave them alone and you tawakkal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Alhamdulillah, many of you maybe have children, but you put them in the, in, in the good hand. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he left his son and his wife in the desert. Right? Yeah. And there is no might, no power except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, this dua was reading by the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when asked the angel to carry the arash, Allah arash, the biggest Allah creation is arash. And the eight angels said, Ya Allah, how could I carry this arash? He said, yes, this word. Say, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Now you are in the, in the car, on airplane, don't forget the dua. Say after me, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Subhanalladhi, Sakhwalana hadha, Wa ma kunna lahu, 
mukrinin wa inna ila rabbina lamunqalibun Allahumma inna nas'aluka fi safarina hadzal birra wat taqwa wa minal amali ma tardo Allahumma hawwin alaina safarana hadza ya so Allah akbar Allahu akbar glory to Allah who make us easy of to our vehicle that mean the car can move the plane can that the part is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and then you know the Lord said wa inna ila rabbina and then to Allah is return it's very interesting you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the air said wa inna ila rabbina lamun qalibun because when you leave your house it's not guarantee you will return maybe you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah Yeah. Can we see the Arabic version just to make a picture? Yeah, yeah. So, Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Subhanalladhi sakhalana hadha wa ma kunna lahu mukrinin wa inna ila rabbina lamunqalibun Allahumma inna nas'aluka fi safarina هذا البر والتقوى ومن العمل ما ترضى اللهم هون علينا سفرنا هذا اللهم هون اللهم make it easy for me this traveling to everything you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so dua is very important number six make a lot of dua during traveling The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, has said that the dua of traveler is mustajab, is accepted. And you are everything now. You are traveling, you know, you're going to his house. Right? This is the best opportunity. So bring the book of dua and read it when you are, when you are in the airplane, right? When you are in the bus. Right? Uh, be with good people all the time. Very important. Friend is very important. Because it can affect you, right? In the Arabic, it said, "As-sohba tasrikul ada." Friendship can 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 take your habit. Yeah. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Akthiru min ikhwan al-sorihin." Make a lot of good friends because benefit you in this life and next life. In this life, good friend always remind you. Right? Hey, time for pray. No, no, don't talk about this, brother. Yeah. Be patient and don't lose temper. This is very important. Be patient, sabar, and don't lose temper. Because you are going to be tired and hot. It's not easy to be patient. Right? Remember that you are not going for a picnic. You are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his house. And to meet the prophet in his city. So he said to yourself, I don't care what happened. As long as I can reach my dream. I don't care maybe the bus will be late. I don't care the heat. I don't care about the food. I don't care about the airplane. So I don't care about that. As long. Because Allah SWT is sometimes going to test you. And Allah is going to test each one of us is different. Some might be Allah test us from here. Like two sisters from uh, Afghanistan. We have problem with the passport. Alhamdulillah, they, they got it there. <laughs> right? It is a test. Allah tells you from here. Some may be the airplane, some may be during the marat. So everybody has to be ready. You know, even the president, Allah will test them during the hard time. Yeah? So always be patient and then lost temper. So on August 2nd, this will be the first Dhul Hijjah. We arrive in Medina, inshallah. Right? We'll check in, you know, and this is our hotel. You can also Google, right? So this will be inside the building. If you go to uh, uh, Makkah Clock, that's under the Makkah Clock in this area. So it's very easy access to, huh? Uh, sorry. Medina, thank you. It's Medina. Right. <laughs> yeah. Medina is easy, easy access because there's only one way. Makkah is like this, right? So, On the 3rd of August, right, or 2nd Dhul Hijjah, 
stay in Medina, do a lot of ibadah in Masjid Nabawi. There will be one day tour to historical places in Medina. So we're going to go to the first one, I think, to Masjid Kuba. The first masjid that Rasulullah has built when he arrived from Makkah to Medina. The Prophet said whoever make wudu from his hotel or from his home and then visit the Masjid Kuba, he will get the reward like the reward of Umrah. Rasulullah used to go there, yeah, walking, right? And then we're going to go to the Uhud, right? Going to the seven masjid, we're going to, uh, what do you call? Uh, what's again? Seven masjid and Masjid Qiblaten, we pass by. And also, is going to bring you to the, the dead palm trees farm. Yeah, so you can <laughs> shopping there. So, of course, in Medina, we're going to visit the Masjid of Rasulullah The Prophet said, "Da tashudur rihal illa ila thalatha masajid." Do not make difficult in traveling. That means if if it is it is difficult, don't go. You don't have money, for example, or there's no safety there. Don't go. Illa, except if you're going to three masjid. That means what? If even it is difficult, try it. Do it. Right? Al Masjid Haram, and my masjid, and Masjid Al Aqsa. Right? If you are difficult, try to go. Right? Now, what's the etiquette of, of visiting the Surah Sallallahu Number one, have wudu before entering. Right? You know, very interesting, many Sahaba, when they come back from traveling, from Yemen, from Sham, they didn't go to home. They go direct to the masjid. They pray to the masjid, and then they visit their house. And one Sahaba, you know, he forgot. When he arrived in the house, and he left. His wife said, what's going on? I said, I forgot to visit Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. And then pray to Rokat inside the masjid and prevailly in Dawda. It is not impossible now, right? This before. No, impossible now if you come masjid and pray in Dawda because Dawda now, yeah. they, they're going to make like a group, different group, a turn. They put in one area, they have a curtain here, and the, when they finish here, they open. And brrr, people will run. <laughs> and then the second one will come. <laughs> Right? And you're waiting here, maybe it'll take one hour just to get there. Yeah. Woman in different area. Right? Woman is, is uh, worse than men. <laughs> so you can ask my wife. But it's struggling. Right? We'll talk about this, inshallah, when we are there. This is Raudo. When the carpet is green, this is Raudo area. Right? It is mostly in the main area. But sometimes uh, they close here, so they give, uh, they give spot to, for the woman. Right? There's certain time for women, for men 24 hours. Right? The Prophet said, between my house and my mimbar is the garden of Jannah. Right? You know, you pray in Masjid Nabawi, Allah multiply the reward, 1,000, right? In Raudo, Allah multiply again. Yeah. What you do when you visit Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say salam to the Prophet, right? In one hadith said, no one says salam to me except Allah bring back my ruh, my spirit. You know, when you are here, it said, Sallallahu ala Muhammad, alayhi wa sallam, alayhi, to him, to him. But over there, you say what? Say after me, As-salamu alayka, ya Rasulullah. He said, As-salamu alayka, is you. As-salamu alayka, ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaika, ya Nabi Allah. Assalamu alaika, ya khayra khalqillah. Assalamu alaika, ayyuhan nabiyu, wa rahmatullahi, wa barakatuh. Right? Peace be upon you, O Rasulullah. Peace be upon you, O Nabi Allah. Peace be upon you, O the best of Allah's creation. And this is what you did in tashahud. Right? Blessing and, and, and salam be Rasulullah sallallahu Right? So now on August 6, you know, you're wearing ihram now, we leave Medina. Right? So, you're wearing a hotel, you're not paying attention, 
right? And then you leave in, right? We stop, we're going to spot stop by, I forget to put the pictures, I think last time I put the picture, we're going to stop in the Bir Ali. You pray to Rakat in Bir Ali, right? And the journey will take maybe four to six hours from, from Medina to Makkah, yeah? So you arrive in Makkah, you check in the, this is our hotel, in Pullman Makkah Hotel, right? Maybe we arrive maybe Asar or Maghrib. We take rest, right? And mostly we, inshallah, we're going to do Umrah after Isha, about 10 o'clock. My advice to you, if you want to make Umrah, you want to do uh, Tawaf, don't do it before Salat and after Salat. Do it after one hour, two hours after Salat. We can do the most crowded. Before Salat, will be the area, the area of the uh, Tawaf will be squeezed. People start standing now. You think for pray, pray. So you make tawaf, you will squeeze, right? And after salat, everybody was rushing, right? So therefore, mostly we do umrah at night, 10 o'clock. Most people leave the masjid now. Yeah. You can do tawaf, tawaf, I will take about uh, umrah altogether. Tawaf, sa'i, right? And tahallul, take about two, three hours, right? Then we go home, we go to our hotel, so now we are uh, come to the Sikh or Sefran Dhul Hijjah. This is the opportunity to go every day. You don't miss pray. Because one rock how many you get? 100,000. Then you pray. You know, 100,000, imagine if you pray five times days, you are in Jama'ah. Pray Jama'ah, right? One rock uh, 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 what's it called? How many? 27. So 100,000 times 27. Who good math here? 2.7 2. 7 million. 7 million. <laughs> Subhanallah. And then you, you have two days, three days. Like Indonesian, they are 40 days. You know, and then they go home, you want to pray again. <laughs> I say, what? Well, I still have deposit. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So on the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, going to Mina by bus after breakfast, we we'll spend the night in the tent in Mina. This is Hajj. Yeah. Everything is hotel. Now this is the real Hajj, right? This is this is not Rukun, right? If you don't go on the 8th Dhul Hijjah, you are okay. But it is Sunnah, and it is how the Sallallahu did. So before the step of Rasulullah Sallallahu Because some Hajj just go direct to Arafat. The reason we could, Rasulullah Sallallahu bring the Sahaba to Mina is preparation. Because tomorrow the day of very important day, day of Arafat. I mean, spiritually have to be ready. Because if you are in hotel, right, you shopping and all this. Even then you go to Arafat, your spirit is not there. Because what are what you doing in Mina? Just to be better. Make the kir, right? Read Quran, right? All day. All day just. We're going to do uh, pray Dohor, and then after Dohor, we're going to have lecture, and then Asar, and then Maghrib, and Isha, and going to, you're going to eat and drink and sleep in the same place, right? This is the, our test also. You know, look at the, we're very squeezed, right? So, some people might be snoring, right? This is our test also. <laughs> right? Yeah. And also, people sometimes fighting, some people like, they like the air condition. Some people don't like it. <laughs> right? So, when you come, just look at, I don't like air condition, you sleep under the air condition. <laughs> if you like it, you this way. Right? So, on the 9th of the Hijjah, so you are, we are in Mina now, you know, pray Dohor, Asar, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr, right? So, in the morning, you take shower, you change your, your ihram, right? You prepare for this day. And don't worry, you know, before we do anything, we're going to have class, just to remind you again, to refresh you again. 
Like, don't worry, so don't worry to do because the first thing you go to hard, you like you learning how to drive. You know, when you when you learn how to drive, you look at the street, right? <laughs> the little on you know, inshallah. Yeah, where are we going now? We're going to Arafat, right? Al Hajj is Arafat. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, is there a separate place for wudu and there's a place for the bathrooms, or is it all together? For men and women? Well, men. Well, yeah. If if we want to do wudu, do we have to go into the bathroom area? Is it separate? Like yeah, yeah. Place? That's for a woman area, uh, for men area. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So separate. So you can do wudu. You don't have to go into the bathroom. That's area. right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. This wudu pray. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Close by. No. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Close by. Yeah. It's around your tents. You know, it is, it's better than a long time ago. You know, there's water everywhere. But you had to line up. Right? So therefore you have to be careful of what you eat. <laughs> Don't eat much biryani. <laughs> because not like, you, like, like in your house. Anything you can go. Even you are emergency, you have to line up. And some people can, can just... <laughs> yeah, it will happen. That happened to you. Yeah. Before Salat, right? Oh, almost. So one hour, two hours before Salat have to be, if you are, right? Yeah. So uh, Arafat 10 now is better. Last year, make it like big, you know, and also really tense. Before is, is even you put air condition, it's not work. But this one, Alhamdulillah, is work. It's big. Yeah. So inshallah, no pro problem. You don't need to go to the the mountain, right? It's not Sunnah. Every part of of, of Arafat is Arafat. Uh, mostly we are going to make dua in your tents. Then inshallah, when, when the, the weather is cooler, sooner you, you go out. Try to find any hill, and you make dua to Allah until uh, sunset. Yeah. Yeah. Some places they have uh, spring water. Yeah. So we are now uh, on the 10th of August, and we, st we are come to 10th of Dhul Hijjah. Yeah. Where you go now? We go to Mus Dalifa. We stay Mus Dalifa until midnight. So you cannot leave Mus Dalifa until what? After mid midnight. If you leave before midnight, you have to pay dam, slaughter one lamb. Right? Where we go? We are going to walk from Muzdalifa to get the bus to Makkah. It's not long walking, right? It's how we lucky, something we just come out and see the... And also, just to remind you, be, I mean, in order to make us easy access to get the bus, so when you enter the Muzdalifa, we go to go up. Because Muzdalifa now have different level. And this level is very good level. We have restroom and also empty. Most people are not there because nobody wants to climb. Because if you are stay down, and then after midnight you can see all people like sardine. Even to walk is difficult. So to make it easy, so you go up. Yes, it is not easy in the beginning, but you can be in this area and take rest. So when you wake up, there's the street there. So it's easy to get the bus, right? Just to remind you before you, because, because sometimes when you come to Muzdalifa and you get tired and you want just to stay. I right? don't want to climb a little bit. There's there stairs to go up, right? So and then on, so after we, we, we stay in what you call, in Muzdalifa, you get the bus, we go to Tawaf. Tawaf, Sa'i, this is the, the Hajj now, right? And after finish, we take rest in the hotels, right? We do Tawaf and Hajj. And then, after Asar, we have to come back to Mina, to Stuan al Aqaba before Maghrib. So this is uh, what you call, you can see also over there, you can get sign here the first day. There's you know, no, no sugro, no wusto, only this one. We can come together and start walking and stand seven times, right? 
this is Makkah, and we're going to return here. To get to walk here through the ten hours. Yeah. So now we're going to do on 12 and 11 Dhul Hijjah, stay in Mina and throwing. Right. This is uh, for me, many people, the, the fun in, in Hajj. <laughs> when you are walking through the ten hours, you know, the bake, Allah, Mala bake, right? And you can see crowded, they're all walking. Like I said, I'm ready to fight against you. <laughs> Again, the shaitan, right? Inshallah. Now, alhamdulillah, we have, I think, four levels, right? Yeah, mostly we are in the second level. So, and then on August, this will be the last stoning. You know, this is the, how we walk to the, the, to the, to the, the Jamarat, right? They have escalator here. Yeah. Helping a little bit, but something not work. <laughs> yeah. And also, we, Alhamdulillah, we have air condition here. Yeah. And then 15 of uh, uh, August, or Dhul Hijjah, we're going to rest, do more Ibad in Masjid Haram. So we take rest now, we finish everything. So Alhamdulillah, our hotel is very close, so every time you can come to Masjid. Right? And then on 16, right, or 14 Dhul Hijjah, we do Tawaf Wada. Tawaf Wada has to be the last thing that you do, you know. But if you, for example, if you're still in that area, oh man, I forgot to, get, to buy something for my, my niece, man. you can buy, right? If you go to Jiddah, then you come back, then you have to make Tawaf Wada again, right? Because Tawaf Wada has to be the last one. Yeah. So that I think uh, our hard step by step. Yeah. So now uh, we are on fifteen, and we're going to Jeddah. Yeah, we hope they're going to have new airport. They, they start using inshallah. Yeah. So exactly on two o'clock, yeah, two a.m. We depart from the airport of Jeddah. Yeah. Any question for this journey? Yes. Uh, are we going to stay in a hotel in Jeddah? Um, no, because only how many hours? The six hours, right? Okay. We're going to stay in Jeddah. No, yeah, with no time. Okay. Yeah. So we, we go direct to the airport. Yeah. yeah. No, I think. So everything is yeah, yeah, yeah. Confirming, yeah. Yes? Is it easy to get uh, stones in Mazarifa? Is it easy to get stones in Mazarifa? Yeah, it's easy, inshallah. Can we take, uh, is it possible if we get stones from Mazarifa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they already, they already poor. The, the truck will come and then you can see the poor, uh, the, the, the lights, big, and you can see a lot. Stone. So Don't worry. 49 stone. 49 stone, 49 stone yeah. Just being sixty, maybe you know you lost it, or you can give to somebody. All right. So this is preparation that we need to. Uh, we mentioned last time, yeah, yeah. General checkup, exercise. Don't forget, it's very important. All right. Yeah. And then mental preparation. Make sure that you do it with ikhlas and sincerity. All right. Uh, this is not easy. Shaitan will always come to your mind and, and you want to destroy it. Because you know, Shaitan, how they come to us, it's like if you drink pure milk, right? Yes, you can drink it. But if somebody put one drop of poison, can you drink it? That's what Shaitan do mostly. Right? It's happened to anybody. You know, long time ago, I was imam in, in Olympia. And then we have, uh, on this day, the first time in Seattle, they're going to have a uh, union. That means all the masajid play in one place. But maybe 15, 20 years ago, right? Yeah, in 89, right? Yeah. And we are difficult from Olympia. Because they was fighting here, who going to read the Salat? You know, 
Pakistani didn't agree with the Arab, Arab didn't agree with Pakistan, with the Iraq, and all this. And then Abdul Aziz called me and said, can you help me? He said, what? Well, you read the Salat here. I said, I have to lead in Olympia. We'll send the bus. Then, uh, and then I talked with the people there. I said, okay. And then uh, Aziz taught the committee and said, we found the Imam. Where you come from? SubhanAllah, the first question, where you come from? <laughs> Say, Indonesia. Oh, okay, Indonesia, okay. Because <laughs> on, on that time, the tension, because there's war in Afghanistan, war in Iraq. <laughs> right? So, there's about maybe 15, 20,000 people. You know what I was praying? Alhamdulillahi Rabbin Alameen. Shaitan come to me. Said, Muhammad Juman, look at behind you, 20,000. <laughs> so, Shaitan, something come to you. You know, said, because Imam Ghazali said, when you have this kind, he said, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Yeah. It's not, you will see, we drink tawaf. People take their tawaf on like this. This Kaabah here, Hajar Aswad. Yeah. Some people screaming. You know, she said, oh, no, no, I'm here. I'm the third draw now. And look at direct to his country. He making tova. <laughs> so sincerity is very important. They will distract you sometimes. That's how Satan. And sabar, patient. Right? There is three types of patient. Patient in obedient to Allah. Right? Because to obey to be obedient is still patient. No. Over there, a lot of temptation, right? Sometimes maybe you are shopping. Yeah. Oh, right? There's not easy, some people sometimes just continue and then you miss Salat. And you are there, you miss Salat, for example, <laughs> right? Or you come home at night, you fajr, you're sleepy, right? All in patient. Patient to doing the something that haram, to obey the haram. We need patience. And the last one is patience when bad things happen to you. A test comes to you. Right? Ta'awun. Right? Help one another. Remember that when you go to Hajj, you know, don't only you seek reward by doing tawaf, sa'i, but also this reward sometimes greater than that when you're helping the others. You know, Ibn Abbas one day, he was sitting in the last day of Ramadan in the front of Hajar Aswad. Somebody whispered. He stood up. He was to leave. He said, I've been Abbas, where are you going, man? I said, this brother need me. You're going to leave this good spot? This last thing of Ramadan? He said, yes. Because the Prophet Muhammad said, Man masha fi hajati akhi. Who just walking in order to have his brother. Better than itikaf in Masjid Al-Haram, 10 years. <laughs> The reward is double, yeah? You know, sometimes you have to pray, right? Somebody said, brother, uh, sister, uh, can I talk to you? Wait, like the sunnah was, oh, no. <laughs> Maybe after sunnah, you don't need, she didn't need you. You know, you listen to that person better than person they need, yeah? Husnul khuluk, good conduct, very important. This is, this is the most important, always smiling, right? Even you are tired, it's like, instead of, no, it's like, I'm tired, <laughs> yeah. And halal zad, you know, make sure that what, everything you bring is halal, yeah. Uh, clean yourself by repent and ask forgiveness from the Almighty Allah SWT, meet not istighfar, ask forgiveness from your parents, you know, husband, if your wife, children, family, Kings, neighbors, anybody. Pay your zakah, you don't pay yet. Yeah? Make sadaqah so before you. It's very important. The Prophet said, As sadaqah talfa'ul bala. Sadaqah prevent you from bala. Either you put the masjid or you put anybody. So don't leave the house without giving what? As sadaqah. It's very important. You know, we did already your hajjaining, learn how to read the dua. Right? Remember that dua, you don't need to be what? In Arabic. You can lead uh, any language. But sometimes you take a barakah because it is dua from Quran, like Rabbana Atina, Rabbana Zalamna. It is good also you know already the meaning, in general, right? 
finished with debt. This debt here, I mean, is not like your mortgage, your car, no. The personal debt, if you have if somebody. Make sure that you did provide what your family need, then how to pray janazah. This is very important. Every after salat, you will hear the voice. Right? As-salatu ala al-amwat. You pray for dead bodies, Lord, man. Right? And you know the salat of janazah, you start by uh, four takbir. After the first takbir, you do what? Al-Fatiha. Right? And after the second takbir, you do salawat to Rasulullah. Like tashahud. Right? Allah wa sallam wa ala Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidun majid. Right? And after the third look, after the third one, you make dua for the disease. Right? Just general, Allahumma gfirlahum warhamhum, because you don't know. Or even you make intention, oh, I pray what Imam pray. Right? You don't know. Yeah, make dua, inshallah. You know. You can Google, uh, inshallah, I can say you also, you know, how to pray janazah. Learn the history of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu It's very important to learn the history of Muhammad Sallallahu because you can visit him. You have to know him better. And you will see different when you know him better. Right? There's a good uh, book for that called ar rahiqul Maktum. ar rahiqul Maktum. Right? That's the, he's the winner. You know, there's competition last time to write about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that book was the winner. Right? Or any book. Or listen to the lecture. This lecture good by Yasir Qadi. He has serial about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just listen to him many times, right? Can you send that to us? Huh? Can you send that information to us? Okay, inshallah, we'll send you some. Now, bring your necessity need, like medicines, right? Uh, but if you miss it, don't worry. Over there, medicine, you don't need a prescription. <laughs> <laughs> you just go to the pharmacy and tell you what you have. <laughs> and it will give you... <laughs> But certain medicine, I think, if you, are, you have, cert, have certain sickness, you need to bring it from here, right? And sandals, very important, right? So don't bring to the masjid, uh, you know, expensive sandals, just, you know. Notebook, you write something, yeah. Book of dua and dhikr, and hajj book that you have, money, right? Uh, you have the... Uh, sandal pocket, uh, I think uh, my wife gives to you the sandal pockets, yeah, and cloth, right, the Holy Quran, it is, it is especially, especially needed when you are traveling also when you are in Mina, do a book and, and Holy Quran, right, and because you are wearing ihram, especially for the men, it is difficult sometimes why to put the money, because sometimes you need the money. Don't bring too much money also. Just you know, hand it to hand it to you, right? So my wife found this. Uh, where did you find it? In Ross. Yeah, Ross. I like this because what I have is like a little bit. Well, this is uh, very good. Right? So you can... Yeah. Put the money, put something that's very important. You have two things here. Yeah? You know, you can also you can also buy over there. But it's good if you prepare from here. The stitching is, the rosa. The stitching is irrelevant for that. What's that? It's got stitches on it, it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, no, sir. If you have this. Like Everything. Like yeah, yeah, it's okay. The 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 forbidden is you 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 put it together something and then you sew it. Right, like 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 Kehram, for example, and then destroy it. Yeah, but this one okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. No, I want to share with you something that's very important thing. The fifty thing what you need uh, during the hard time. So what fifty thing that you have to do or recommended to do? The first, do everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. And make the intention before you do it. Remember that in, in any type of ibadah, tawaf, sa'i, jamarat, 
intention is very important. Because some of you forget just, what is your intention? <laughs> right? Allah will not accept. Right? Especially if you stone for somebody, but we have to mention the body. I stone for someone, for example. Right? In Namal Amalu, Biniyat, action, judged by intention. Smile when you see or meet another Muslim. Always very important. This is Ibadah, smile. You get the word from Allah SWT. Right? It said, Abdul Salam is one of the Jews, Rabbi become Muslim. He said, Since I become Muslim, I never see Muhammad SAW except with smiling. He's smiling in the masjid, he's smiling everywhere. He gives khutbah, he's smiling. Right? He says, Salam to strangers. People from Kosovo, from China, from Russia, Assalamu alaikum. You don't need how they're happy, something. Because something we ask, Salam only the one you know. Oh, it's Bangladesh, it's Indonesia, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Seek someone's hand and ask about their health. Especially the old people in your group. Kefalaki brothers, are you okay? When you hear somebody sad, for example, it's like, approach them. Right? This is thought also a type of ibadah. I have an Indonesian friend who went hard with me. He have umbrellas, white umbrellas. You know, he got about 100 different types of signing <laughs> from different countries. It's China, Russia, Kosovo. You always meet somebody said, well, mostly by a sign language. <laughs> and then they, they, they write their name here. Yeah. That's a good memory for him, for his children also. Yeah? Buy tea for someone. You know, people were sitting down, especially they, this is good in Mina. You know, you bring a tea, your yeah, brothers. They have tea, yeah? They have tea, yeah. Yeah, for, for real. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but alhamdulillah, we provide everything. Offer to get groceries for someone, you know, maybe the sister, maybe she's tired, you know what I'm saying? Brother, what you need, I'm going to the grocery. Right? Because in the hotel downstairs, you will see the binda wood. You can find everything there. Right? You offer them. Sit with different countries, Hajj group, ask them about Islam in their area. You know, you know in Mina, this is mostly in Mina. In Mina, you will find the different countries in, and come from different corners of the world. And sometimes you will find people from, from Russia, they're riding the bus. You know, from their country, and you see the bus in, inside the Mina. You know, everything there. They have, they have restroom there, they have uh, sleeping there, right? So sometimes you stop. You know, sometimes they speak English, sometimes not. Yeah? Introduce yourself, I'm from Indonesia. Yeah. Assist someone with their baggage or luggage, such as carry it for them or move it for, for them. You know, sometimes uh, you will see that people was in the, uh, one day, I think in Arafat, there's a sister, he's going to ride, she's going to ride the bus, but she carries something and the bus is moving. And the brother just make dua like this. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, guide someone who sick or ill to the medical center. Alhamdulillah, in Mina and in all places, there is also close to must, called Mustawsib. Now, somebody sick, you know, you just lead them there. Alhamdulillah, we have stopped, but also something is good. Yeah, avoid vain talk. This is very important. You know, this is most important to to be fasting <laughs> from say something, and also don't pay too much. Uh, uh, attention, you know, with with uh, people from different countries and different way they pray. You will find, see people sometimes they just making wudu from the one cups. You say, what's that? Right? Or or you love somebody, and sometimes Allah Subhanahu wa Taala punishes you immediately. My wife told me a story. You know, sometimes when you are in market and temple pray, everybody just line up there. Something mix, mix up, man, woman. So one Indonesian brother, he was praying, and the ladies, I'm sorry, was very big, and praying in front of her. And this he, 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 he admitted, made mistakes, said, and then he started talking with his, in, in his mind. Oh man, this is a big woman. Why are you praying in front of me? Something like, 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 like say something bad. So he pray. And they mix sujood, right? 
And then the lady, when he sit down from sujud, the man still sujud, so was sitting on his. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't know me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, be careful with what you see, what you uh, what you hear. So you have to be controlled, it, right? And never, never uh, put down anybody for the, because of the ethnic city. Because you know, never feel you know the only time that you can connect to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala if you are humble, you put down yourself. Because sometimes you are from America, from this, you feel something. There. It's very dangerous in the time. Yeah. He said Talbiyah loudly and encouraged others. The bank Allah of somebody was there. Brother, the bank Allah, the bank. Right? Ask about the house and comfort of elderly person in your group. Make sure they are attended to. This is ibadah too. Right? You know. Assist others in gathering stone for Jamarat. First of all, you see the sister. Sister, just sit down. Sir. I'm looking for you. The brothers, sit down. I'm looking for you. You don't need them. Right? This is also double reward on the time. I saw people that they, they, they give to about 10 people. They love it to call right? you know, Sister, it's too big, brother. This one good. They give everything. <laughs> because you know the double reward you will get for that. Yeah? Uh, make dua while in sujood. Right? Remember that when you are in Masjid Haram now, so don't forget, for example, you always, for example, make uh, duha, only two rakat, right? This is good attempt. Do maximum, because maximum duha what? Eight rakat. So you're in Masjid Haram now. You are in the morning, you are fresh, pray duha. And then at night, you make tawaf, after tawaf, you sit down until fajr, you know, you used to make uh, Qiyamul Layl, for example, three rakat, two and one. Make eleven rakat, make long sujud, right? So this is opportunity. Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, the closest between Allah and us, when we make what? Sujud. Yeah. So offer, the, to, uh, offer uh, to stone on behalf of hadith. You see, sister or brother, he's not feeling good. Brother, you just stay in the, in the tent, I will stone for you, right? But if you stone for somebody, you have to stone first. And then finish, and then you stone for someone, right? Protect your sight by lowering your gaze. It's very important. I mentioned last time, there's a brother, you know, he asked me just to sleep, you know. I'm going to stay in Makkah. After half hour, half hour he came back. I said, brother, you said you're going to stay in Makkah. Oh, I couldn't. What happened, I'm sorry, when he entered Masjid, he not lowered his gaze. He's so beautiful when come out. <gasps> so when he's in the Kaaba, he doesn't see Kaaba. He only saw the picture of this woman. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah? Remind people of the life of the Sahaba. So if you find Vikati, Alhamdulillah, man, we have air condition, we have food. Look at the Sahaba on the time, how they make Hajj. There's nothing. Right? Read Quran with Tafsir, you know. The Quran, look at this, was, uh, you read something. You know why they repeat it, why it's meaning. You try to understand the meaning, right? Do authentic zikr for the morning and evening, right? Remain people of patience. Right? This is very important also to remain on other. People sometimes, maybe their emotion, they, they forget, they thought. Right? He said, uh, sister, brothers, please. Right? Remind them they are here and, and the example of our ulama, that means the people who come to Hajj before us. Share and explain uh, a Hajj khutbah you have heard to others around you. You know, we have people, for example, oh, Alhamdulillah, in Hajj training, or oh, you hear from somebody, or oh, you watch YouTube, and you share with the others. Right? Explain the importance of purifying one's action for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, and also in the Eid, don't forget to, to call your, this is called Siratul Rahim. 
in Islam, Silaturrahim, good relation with the family is the most important. Allah, we can mention in the Quran many times, Allah warning us. Right? So therefore, this is the Eid, you are Amina, you know, you call them. Especially if you have parents. Alhamdulillah, ma, make my for me. Right? Use miswak, especially before Salah. You know miswak, right? Yeah. To clean your... Uh, control anger, assist other with the same as to avoid fighting right, or ill feeling. This is, this is the, the most, you know, I, am, uh, I always mention many times, you know, if you cannot control your anger, don't come for Hajj. Because you're going to what? Waste your money, waste your time also, right? Uh, when we repeat again control anger, now you don't see it that. And you are over there, I said, oh, Imam Jabal right, man. You will see that. People fighting everywhere. <laughs> you know, fighting for the bus, fighting for the... Sometimes they're fighting because there's a truck was bringing food. Or truck bringing the drink. Everybody was rushing. Yeah. Help people to find a place to sleep and rest. I remember a long time ago, you know, the, the mina was parked. And the brother come late. It was like this. The brother said, he, he prepared a spare spot for him. <laughs> and the brother, until now, they have become the best friend. They still remember, right? Or maybe the Ikwama already started. But Kama and Sola and my sister were looking for a spot, right? And you have a little bit, you can, sister, come here, like this. Maybe that the one who brings the Jannah, we know. You give a spot to somebody. Because some of the people are looking, it's like this. <laughs> Instead of give it, you, <laughs> you make sure you don't come here. <laughs> yeah. During harshness of hot or cold weather, remind yourself of the you know, uh, and sending torment, an ending torment of hellfire. People can be, oh brother, it is all of us too hot. Yeah, brother, over there, in Mahjar, it's hotter than this. Right? Is this true? No, it will be very hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Say a lot of this dua, La ilallah la sarikala la al-mukul until the end. Yeah, at least every day, 100 times. Also, you can read it during Tawaf. Right? Rasulullah SAW, he loved to read this. Yeah. Do you remember the last time I mentioned? When somebody said, Rasulullah, this is not dua. He said, yes, if you read this, Allah take care of your dua. What do you want? Say dua of entering the marketplace when you go there. Because we have a lot of marketplace over there. <laughs> right? Say after me, inshallah. La ilaha illallah wa hadaw la sharika la lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu yuhyi wa yumit wa huwa hayyun la yamut bi yadihi al khair wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir Ya Give charity to those who sell small thing You know sometimes you will see the key the selling sandal and all this small thing right don't bargaining How much this Five real, yeah, he calls five real as uh, <laughs> one real to real. These people, this and the heat, you know, even if they change, don't give it, so just go take for you. Because some people, some people, even bargaining people or on, on the street. <laughs> Maybe this for their food to eat, right? Yeah. Attend the halako, they are given in Mina and Arafat. It's very important to attend the halako. Yeah, we go inshallah to have halako every after the, the prayer, inshallah. Stay in Mina as long as you can. Because some people are not patient stay in Mina. You know, they at night they go to the hotel, they stay in hotel. You are not in Paris, in London. You know, this is only a very short time. Why you go to a, you go to a hotel and you stay there, right? Yeah. Remember that staying in Mina and making dua, the more accepted than you are in a hotel. It's an opportunity. Because Mina is hope. That, you know, you, in order to fulfill your hopes to make dua in Mina. 
right? Remind people to go home as better Muslim, right? Alhamdulillah, Allah SWT invited us, so we have to be changed when you come home. Compliment someone sincerely, right? Either with smiling or with something, yeah? Give a tafsir class after salah, right? We're going to have it, inshallah. Ask someone, you know, also they have booth everywhere that if you have some question, you can ask that in the booth. Uh, take your Muslim and invite them to sit with the, the elders because sometimes we, we can find people elderly, nobody talk to him. Sit down with them. Brother, brother, this brother need help. You talk to him. Talk to your Australian. Yeah? For men on the days of Eid, you know, offer perfume to those around you. If you buy something, your brothers, it's Eid. Yeah? On a day, you walk through the tents, reciting talbiyah loudly while reminding me. Because sometimes people in the tent, they are, they are talking about something and forget. You pass by. Just remind people. Visit to the sick and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all He has blessed you with. It is very important. I, you know, one day we have uh, an American convert and become Muslim, marry with Indonesian sister. And then when we are in, in Mina, and he becomes sick, and then the ambulance took him to the, to the hospital, right? And my wife texted me that I need to go there. I went there for, with his wife, and they was do CPR, and asked doctors, there is home, he said, no hope. So I come forward, I was, uh, what's his name? George, I said, George, say, la ilaha illallah. Subhanallah, his, 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 his face was bright, was smiling. La ilaha illallah, Allah, he died. Because he was a military, he was soldiers. You know, the, when the American NBC going to take him back here, their special ceremony. So I thought to his wife, said, you know, it's better tomorrow, Friday, let them pray in Makkah, you know, so, Million people going to pray for him, and also going to bury him in Mala. And I thought to the, the consulate, I said, you know, if his wife say okay, we get okay. So Alhamdulillah, and then his wife said, okay, he signed it. <laughs> right? Because you bring here, maybe, yes, you're honored by the people here. <laughs> but all the special. Right? Focus hard on helping those near to you. Remember special blessing Allah has bestowed upon you and say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we are Mina, Alhamdulillah in Arafat, Alhamdulillah, you know, all this, I'm in good health. So always remember the, the good thing that happened to you and forget something that, that may be disturb you. Yeah? So pray to Allah using 99 most beautiful name. So when you ask Allah SWT, when make dua, they make dua. Ya Rahman, Ya Allah, Ya Rahim, Ya Allah. Ya Maliku, Ya Allah, Ya. If you have the book, you can read the book. So Allah love when you make dua, you mention, you praise him first. Don't just, Rabbana Atina, Allah, just give it to me. Right? <laughs> Even in Fatiha, Allah teach us. Before you, I said, Ihdina, I said, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yawmiddin, Iyaka, Nabudu, Wa Iyaka, Nastayin, and then what? Ihdina. I had all prayers, all, you mentioned about Allah is looking everything, then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Fill your pocket with uh, candies and gifts to the children you meet. Very important sometimes you give something. You will find also people on the street rushing and asking for favor from you. But be careful, if you give one, everybody will, go, will overcome 10 people, 200 people <laughs> come to you. Right? So don't also, uh, <coughs> don't miss also when you are in Medina or in Medina to pray in the masjid as, as, as best as you can and then try to make khushu also. So you are f here for a very limited time, collect on hasana, good deed, as much as you can. So not only, for example, salat, sadaqa, right, and helping the others, right and supporting the others, many things that you, 
this opportunity to you, just do it inshallah. Be patient and kind and gentle with others. Ask Allah for another visit soon. So when you make dua, Ya Allah, as you bring me here to Mina, bring to Muzdalifa, please bring me again. And also, also bring, bring, bring my father, my mother, my sister, yeah, make dua for them. Yeah? Always intend reward from Allah for everything you go through during Hajj. Right? And the last one, inshallah, I would like to share with you because when you are traveling, and you are will be on the yeah look at this hadith so uh, on Friday they will be on the first of Dhul Hijjah. Allah swear in the Quran said, Wal Fajri walayalin ash. He swear by the Fajr. Some ulama said this Fajr means Idul Adha. Walayalin ash. Ten days. From first to Hijjah until ten of Dhul Hijjah. Right? Look at how he said. There is no deed that is better in the sight of Allah or more greatly reward than a good deed done in the first 10 day of the al-Adha Hijjah he said even jihad even jihad you know jihad Allah bless us ya Allah you know maybe we never do jihad but these 10 days better than that even he said it's better than the night of power at al-Qadr because only one night we have all these 10 days right so you are, you are now when the Friday start, everything will be count, inshallah. Right? He said, better than Latul Qadar, like we're going to mention that. So what, what, what's, what's, uh, what's the best thing to do in these 10 days? Of course, Alhamdulillah, you're going to Hajj. Right? Fast all nine days, especially on the day of Arafah. Right? But because you are in Hajj, you're not sunnah for us. You understand what I mean? For people who are not uh, are not Hajj, it's recommended to fast it. But because Hajj did power, uh, the Hajj different, right? So even you cannot fasting on the nine because you are in Arafat, right? Because you what in in the Arafat. Then from Dikir and Takbir, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar. During this time, this we can do, Inshallah. Stand the night of in prayer. Right. They make sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Increase in doing all good deed, uh, you know. So, uh, and then slaughter an animal. That's uh, inshallah we're going to do, right? And then attend eat prayers and a thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Just this very, very important to remind you, there's uh, when you when are traveling until you get to Medina, so you are in the days that a good deed is beloved to Allah than the other days. Yeah. So before we close Allah make dua, I would like to invite uh, Sheikh Sufyan, right? So yes, yeah. You can uh, fast uh, Monday and Yeah, yeah, you can fast Monday and Thursday. If you are there, you know, if you feel energy is, okay, you can fast. Yeah, yeah. But you, if you need, for example, I need to make tawaf, I need to this, I need the power, so yeah, yeah. So Alhamdulillah, uh, we have uh, uh, our staff, and also Mashallah is knowledgeable. He graduated from Medina, and also Inshallah we're going to have Brother Abdullah with us, right? You know, to helping us, Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I think I've been with Sheikh Joban as a Rahman team member for the past, I think, well, I've made Hajj with him for a very long time. I think, uh, what, 10 years now? Yeah. 10 years, right? 10 years with Sheikh Joban. I think the first year I went with him was when I uh, was a student in Medina. And I was there for quite some time. So Alhamdulillah, every single year that I was there in Medina, I spent time with Sheikh Joban and uh, we, we made Hajj together. Uh, some tips that I wanted to share with you, just a small tip. I know Sheikh Joban, he's covered a lot, Alhamdulillah. 
I uh, wanted to make mention that you leave your anger and your temper problems here and don't bring it with you. And make sure you pack suffer with you. Please pack suffer with you, patience with you. Well, Allah, you're telling yourself, I've never gotten mad. You know, I'm a, I'm a happy person, I'm a cheerful person every single day. My wife or my spouse can attest to this. But oh, Wallahi, brothers and sisters, in Hajj, Shaitan will, will bother you a lot and you're going to see yourself getting angry at the smallest of things. And just remember also that Hajj is a spiritual journey and it's on a vacation. So with that type of mentality, you are prepared for the worst. When you go to Hajj, when you open the plane, you're going to get this whiff of hot air. For those that have never been to Saudi Arabia before, you're going to get this whiff of hot air. And it's basically Ahlan wa Sahlan. It's basically welcome to Saudi Arabia, welcome to Hajj. So there will be obstacles and difficulties. I did not say this is going to be easy, nor did I say it was going to be difficult. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with certain things that you yourself may find difficult and uncomfortable. But Hajj, like I said, is a spiritual journey. And what shaitan is trying to do is trying to make it, this hajj a not accepted hajj. So our job, inshallah, is to try our best to be patient. And remember that ayyam ma'dudat, these are a small number of days. Alhamdulillah, we are very fortunate as uh, you know, Westerners or as Americans coming back home to a nice house. Some people, that living condition that we are going to be in Mina, whatever we see, whatever we witness, some people, that's how they live every single day. So we say, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to come back home uh, to uh, the United States. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing everyone, inshallah, on Thursday. I will be at the airport with all of you. Yeah. So inshallah, we're going to see everybody. We're going to people, you will see people, inshallah, come from different states. Yeah, some from uh, California, from New York, and all this. Inshallah, meet in, in uh, what do you call Frankfurt, yeah. So this is this is what we need in the Arafat. Sorry, sorry, in Musdalifa, because Musdalifa is not tents. It's like a big parking lot. So you need something to to pray on it, to sleep on it, right? So this is special, only ten real, but three dollars. Yeah, if you can, if you want to bring it here, better, for example, you can bring it here also, yeah. Yeah, can you open it? Please? Yes. There's an inflatable pillow. <laughs> you won't, you won't use it. <laughs> there are pillows in the middle. <laughs> it's just a mat for you to lay down on. It's very comfortable, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also after finish, you can leave it there. Yeah. People can use it, so it's like, yeah. Yeah. So you don't need to be a mattress, big, no. no. Yeah, because it's difficult to carry also. <laughs> so yeah. you, uh, is this what you suggest we use? Yeah, yeah. Not, not the, the yoga mat the, that we can find it. Yeah, yeah, because it's difficult to carry it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheikh, where can we buy it from? Uh, over there, inshallah. Yes. In Medina. In Medina, you can buy it in Medina, in Mecca, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have something like this we can bring it here, right? If you have something like we can bring it, yeah. Yes. Um, just briefly, could you tell us about the difference between dam and qurban during the Hajj? Yeah, yeah. Dam is part of Hajj, qurban is separate. That's right, yeah. You mentioned last week, uh, dam, yeah, if somebody uh, violated any rule of Hajj restriction, then you have to pay dam. Dam in blood. That means you say have to, have to uh, what do you call, slaughter one lamb. Right? And we have, we, uh, 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 everybody paid already because we do um, uh, Hajj Tamatu. In Hajj Tamatu, there is a dam. Kurban is different. And also, dam have to be over there. And certain days, you have to do it. But Kurbani, you can do it in your country, you can do it also over there. Right? Kurbani is like every year that you, you do it. They call Kurbani, also they call it Tadhiyah or Udhiyah. Right? That's the Quran said. Fasolli Rubika one har. Right? Huh? Are you doing some hajj for somebody else? Yes. You just pay someone else, also you can to pay dam. Not all here. Right? And as I mentioned last time, so if you want to sacrifice over there, just bring in your money, then you can give to my to my wife in Medina. Right? You know. It is good you are there, so the reward everything multiplied there. You get opportunity to do the Qurbani there. Yeah. And, uh, yes? So I have a quick question about Ihram. So Ihram is the intention for Hajj or for Umrah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
But don't laugh at me. So if we need to go to the bathroom, that's all you will do, and we come back, right? It does not break any rules. No, no. Nothing. What if somebody has like a blood from the nose? Would that break anything? No. Nothing to do with ihram. You have blood, you have vomit, nothing. It's not break your ihram. And remember also, the only time you have to have wudu when? Tawaf. For example, if you have some, some issue with your stomach, you cannot control your wudu, for example. Have all ritual of hajj, you don't need wudu. Arafat, Mina, Muzdarifa, even Sa'i. Without wudu, you are okay. Only tawaf. The Prophet said, tawaf like prayer, like salat, except that you allow to talk during tawaf, in salat not. Right? That's a good thing because sometimes it's difficult. But yes? And then uh, when we finish the first tawaf, you said we have to pray with Surah al Kafir and the Ikhlas. Uh, after seven, yeah. Oh, after the seven. After seven, yeah. After seven. We've done everything, then you go to the Maqam Ibrahim, and you pray to Rokat. Yeah, not every. Not every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to repeat the wudu after four circles. Do you have to start over? Again? No, no. Yeah, it's not like salat. Yeah, salat has to be over. For example, you after four, you know, you break your wudu. Just make wudu. But remember that to make wudu is not easy over there. <laughs> you have to go out, right? Unless for wudu they have a special area that for drink water, jam jam water, you can make wudu also over there. Yeah. And also, like, I'm a little bit confused about that. So when we're doing a tawaf and there's a lot of people, how they control this? Is it like group of people coming doing tawaf or the three million people doing tawaf at the same time? No, no, mostly not three million. Just, you know, maybe 50,000, 20,000. But alhamdulillah, we always manage. It's still a lot. It's a lot also, yeah. It's not controlled. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's control. But sometimes the, the police, when, when there's mostly uh, my thing, Tawaful Wada. Because during Tawaful Wada, some people are going to go to Medina. Some people are going to go home. So everybody wants to rush to get into Tawaf. So sometimes if they see the crowded too much, they block all the entrance. Right? For a certain time. Right? So therefore, but alhamdulillah, mostly we are alhamdulillah, we organize good, you know. When we talk, we are together, woman in the middle, and all men protecting the woman. Yeah, yeah. Question, yeah, yeah. How close they are, right? Yeah, yeah, inshallah. Yeah. Well, so what happens if they shut it down? You, you have to do the tawaf? Yeah, no, they start off like two, three hours, and then when they say So it. that's what you do it earlier, and to make sure that you get through, because if they close it, and you plan to go there, go straight to the airport, then that's not going to work. No, no, yeah. so therefore why we have to we make, make sure we, we make a schedule accordingly okay. right but mostly not not always but especially now now is a wider and also we have the, the three right three levels, yeah. yeah we have three levels so if we if, if but the second one third one never close it's okay. always open yeah 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 so if in the aeroplane how do we pray in the aeroplane you get to do too or what? yeah I think yeah we are we are uh, in the morning we're going to pray Doha and Asa in Dallas right? What time will we arrive in Dallas? Yeah, one thirty. Yeah, yeah. So you pray uh, Doha and Asa in Dallas, okay. right? And then Maghrib Isha in the airplane. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just sitting down in Maghrib. But make sure when you pray, don't tempt the people to serve the food. <laughs> because one day I was praying with my wife, and there came the. Beef or chicken? I just like this. Beef or chicken? And one said, didn't speak English, just put it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think we use Saudi Island, right? Yeah, from Frankfurt, we have used Saudi Island. Saudi Island have special place to pray in the back, yeah. Special place. Yeah. If not, just sit down, pray. That's enough. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. If you get lost from the group, how do you get back? To you come back home. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's all we're going to have a WhatsApp group. Okay. Right? So you can take us. Yeah. We don't miss the group, so therefore why we get get assigned. So everybody going to carrying the the what necklace did. Yeah. yeah. So you can see the signs the group. And all huh? Usually like, yeah. 
We have the flag too. Flag, yeah. We have flag also. We have a Rahman flag. Follow, follow, the flag. follow the flag. But be careful, sometimes they have, they have a look, flag that look like. Yeah, somebody of our sister has followed the flag that's from Canada. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We will use this flag majority of the time, except in the Masjid of Al Haram. Yeah. In Medina and Mecca, both masjids, they don't allow flags, but outside, they will allow us to use a flag, especially when uh, in Mina, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We now we go to Jamarat when you go, you will this one. The flag looks exactly like uh, the banner that we will have outside of our tents because in Mina, all the tents look exactly the same. They're all white. Uh, you you might get lost if you don't pay attention to. Maktab berapa? Uh, Forty-three. Yeah, forty-three. Yeah, the number of the maktab or the it's tent number. You have in your um, ID card. Oh, sorry. Send your bank uh, cell phone number in Saudi and have the uh, maktab. <coughs> The hotel in there and please put in your luggage okay in your luggage tag the send your band uh cell number in south so you know that like, yeah if you get lost yeah the cell phone number of send your band put in your luggage tag okay so they can contact you okay. inshallah make doa again make doa yourself too of course now nobody uh, lost the luggage and that that's the best you know mm -hmm. to make dua as Allah to make yeah, it. Yeah. All of us. but remember that if something happened yes. we cool down yes. you know one day long time ago about 20 years ago we lost all the luggage oh. or if a no single luggage come that's happened nobody wants this but alhamdulillah we have brother from uh, uh, Jidda he helping us because they, they come for the next flight. Yeah. You know. It's good we happen. So therefore, if something happens, uh, we have to, this is Alhamdulillah Allah, this is for you, from you, it's test for me, I'm ready. Right? Because only luggage. Yes? I appreciate you, Raman. The phone number that you have of US or you have a Saudi phone number? They have Saudi uh, number, yeah. We have US and Saudi. So, so, Number, uh, I mean the Saudi cell number. Yeah. yeah, because they, when when you when you report you lose your luggage, they will ask the number that they can call. They mostly want they will want to call the international. They call the local. They will call me and then we pick up. Yeah, yeah. And also maktab mean the office forty three. So if you lost, just look it for the maktab. And the maktab in Makkah. In Mina, Arafat with Dalifa, all 43. So wherever you go, just 43. Right? But 40 America. Because we have 50 different countries. Okay. And mostly also the sign is all is red. Red sign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, see, notice in your ID card, this number is matched with this number. Right? So this is to make it easy for us, for example, we are in hurry. Okay, Haji number one, two, ten, bus number one. So you have to remember what number you you are, okay? So don't ask what you what's number, my number. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot remind you remember all of the So but, you know, it's easier for us if I say one, two, twenty, go to uh, bus number one. So, you know, like, mm -hmm. okay? All right. Yeah. Okay, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, hamdan ya fi ni amma kafir ya Rabbana raka alhamdu kama in bagi di jalali wa tika wa adhimi sultanik Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sinna Muhammad wa alayhi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma anfa'ana bima alamtana wa kina adaban nar Rabbi yastir wa la tu'astir ya kareem Allahumma balikna ila baytika al-haram wa ziyarati rasulika al-adum Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana وفي الآخرة يا سنة وكنا ذب النار وصلى الله وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين. so make sure at least three hours before you be in the airport cell because it's international.